Hey guys, how's it going? Dr. Leatherface back with a monthly pickups video and I've got a lot of cool stuff to show you this month. There's there's not a lot of stuff here, but there's some pretty cool stuff. I managed to go to a couple of car boot sales over the uh, the month, which will be uh, flea markets for my uh, people watching in America. And uh, I managed to find some really, really interesting stuff. So uh, first up, one of my friends came to me with um, a, a little cousin's uh, PlayStation 2 lot that she wanted to get rid of. So I quite happily took it off of her hands. And obviously it came with the PlayStation 2, the fat model, which is my preferred model. It's a bit more durable and lasts longer than the uh, the slimmer model. You get a lot of problems with the laser and the tape and that, uh, scraping discs. But very happy to get this. It came with two official memory cards, which are always helpful, especially when you have 500 plus PlayStation 2 games. I can never have too many memory cards, so not bad. So awesome PlayStation 2. And then it came with this little box of games. Uh, she didn't really tell me what was included in there, but I got a general gist via a photo that she showed me. But there's some pretty cool stuff in here, some stuff I've never even heard of. First off, there's a, a game called Street Racer. It's a very, very early PlayStation title, you can tell by the case. And it kind of just looks like a Mario Kart clone, but... Um, don't know if it's any good or not, but I'm going to check that one out. It's going straight into the collection. It came with True Pinball as well. Do not have this in my collection, so that's always good. Love the old pinball games. I love these uh, these sort of games made by Ocean that came out on the SNES. Uh, the Super Nintendo and the Mega Drive, they made a couple for them, and I really enjoyed them. And uh, what else we've got? Right. We've got some more of the budget games. Power Pinball. I remember seeing these really cheap back in the day. And Rayman, that's always a good game to have. I've always got, I've already got that in my collection, but they always sell very easily. And it came with the classic Tomb Raider, Lost World, of Jurassic Park, which is a game I enjoy way more than I should. Another classic, Worms, can never go wrong with that. Always very easy to sell. And Odd World, Abe's Odyssey, which is an absolute classic. So I already have this too, but so right, I can always trade that with somebody for some more games. And who wants to be a millionaire junior? Which, uh, yeah, I probably won't be keeping this one, even though I don't have it in my collection. Uh, London Racer 2. I didn't even know there was a sequel to London Racer. Um, London Racer was okay. It's one of those games that should be absolutely fucking terrible, but it was kind of enjoyable, so I kept it in my collection. So I'm probably going to put this one in my collection too. And then uh, a couple of demo discs that I didn't have. I'm a big demo collector from PlayStation. This is uh, Disc 19 Volume 2, which I believe is number 49 in total. So very, very good demo to have because it's got Tombi on there, which is a very rare and expensive game. And Demo 1. This came with uh, the original PlayStation uh, when you bought it back in 95, 96. And there were several different versions of them. I checked this out and strangely enough it's one that I don't have and I have like five other versions of it. So another different demo for the collection. It came with a PlayStation 2 demo, just usual bullcrap, Airblade, Dark Cloud, whatever. And it came with this. This kind of made it worth buying the whole bundle for just on its own because... I already have this game, it's one of my absolute favourite games on the system, but um, yeah, I can sell this pretty much for what I paid for the entire box, and so yeah, that's kind of cool to have. I feel kind of bad about it, but I didn't really know it was in there, but hey, that's the uh, wonders of buying little bulk lots from people, you get some good deals. And then they come with some PlayStation 2 games. Pro Evolution Soccer 2. Really, really, really happy to have that one. Whoopee shit. <laughs> Turok Evolution. This comes in every PlayStation 2 bundle ever. I already have this. It's an okay game. Not as good as the N64 ones, but yeah. I'll be selling that one on with the system probably. And then Crash Bandicoot Warp. Uh, the Wrath of Cortex. Don't have this in my collection because for some reason Crash Bandicoot games have pretty much retained their price over the years. With the exception of a couple of PlayStation 2 ones. This one's kind of like, I don't know, mid-price range. It goes for about 10-15 bucks. But yeah, I didn't have it in my collection, so that's awesome. Shame it's platinum. Uh, Scooby-Doo, Night of a Hundred Frights. Uh, I'm not sure if this is actually any good or not, but I'm a big Scooby-Doo fan, so I will be keeping this one. And then Airblade. Um, probably not even going to look at it. Uh, it's probably just going to go straight onto eBay. And then it came with all of the usual wires. An official PlayStation 2 pad, which is always good to have. And a goddamn monstrosity of a uh, third-party pad. Look at the size of this beast. It's, uh, I don't know. It feels kind of okay. The D-pad's a bit off, but I'll give it a go, see what it's like, but it'll probably just end up being sold with the system. So that's a nice little PlayStation 2 bundle there, courtesy of one of my friends. That's awesome. 
And I don't know what to do next. Uh, let's do some Sega Dreamcast because every pickups video of mine has to have Dreamcast in it. And I've got a lot of independent games um, this month, so very happy about that. Um, if you don't know if you saw my previous video, I completely raided the Goat Store of all of their uh, indie Dreamcast releases. And the first one I picked up would be Feet of Fury. I'm going to go through these in order of the year they released. It's kind of like Dance Dance Revolution, like I said in the other video, and it's pretty good fun. Um, I didn't play it with a dance pad, uh, dance mat, but I did give it a good go, and I spent a considerable amount of time trying to unlock everything on it. It was quite enjoyable, so very surprised with that one. And then the next one is Machupe or something, pronounced like that, which is probably the worst out of the lot. Um, I thought I'd really, really enjoy it because I love Mahjong, but... Uh, they, for some reason, it's just the, it's so low res that it's hard to make out a lot of the pictures on the uh, tiles. So, yeah, I didn't quite enjoy that one as much as I thought I was going to. And then the next one was Inhabitants, which, unfortunately, it, it was a lot of fun, but it's a very, very short game. There's a lot of stuff to unlock, and I haven't quite unlocked everything yet. But it, I enjoyed it, but it was very, very short. It's over very quickly, so I'm trying to right now work through and unlock everything, but it's, it's good fun. The next one is Cool Herders, which is like Choo Choo Rocket kind of arcade sort of style gameplay. You can have up to four players, like she but you're sheep herding. It's absolutely crazy. The, the single player game is very, very hard, but I still had a lot of fun playing it. So I'm still playing for that one at the moment, trying to unlock everything, and get through the story mode, and it's pretty good fun. And the last one from the Goat Store is Eredi's Master of Blocks, which is a pretty good uh, game. It's kind of like Tetris with a twist, and uh, yeah, a lot of fun playing it. Um, I surprisingly put the most time into this one out of all of them, which is kind of interesting because this is the one that tends to get the worst reviews out of all of the Goat Store um, published games, but I kind of enjoyed it myself, and yeah, so I'm just playing for that one right now. And that was it for the indie games from the Goat Store this month. But then I picked up something awesome. I finally picked up Geist Force, which if you collect for the Dreamcast or know anything about it at all, this was supposed to be the first game uh, made for the Dreamcast. It was supposed to be one of the first released. But for some reason early on in the process it got cancelled. And uh, a couple of years ago, somebody bought a dev kit and found Geist Force partly finished on the dev kit. And the guys at Assembler Games over the forums, they painstakingly took a long time to piece it together and make it playable on a Dreamcast console. And they pressed a very, very uh, small amount of discs um, for, to be put into people's collections for people to help donate and you know get the process going. So it's finally awesome to have a uh, thought-to-be-lost Dreamcast game in my collection. This is a reproduction because, yeah, there's very, very small numbers of the actual Assembler Games pressed one, but it is absolutely perfect. Um, yeah, it's a very, very good quality reproduction. I'm very, very happy to have it in my collection because there's pretty much no chance I'll ever pick up one of the... Uh, the ones produced by Assembler Games, but yeah. The good thing about this reproduction is, unlike most reproductions, it actually says it's a reproduction. It says a Retro Game Lab reproduction down there, which uh, is good because you get a lot of people who make reproductions and buy reproductions and they stick them into the market and then you get a lot of people buying something that they think was original and genuine. And that's kind of shitty, really, but as long as it's got you know reproduction written on there or somewhere gives it away... That's cool. I'm just happy to have one in my collection. All nice, cased, manual, everything, and that's awesome. And so next up is Out Trigger, which is another game I picked up um, a couple of weeks back, actually. Uh, it's a very, very good first-person shooter arcade fun. Um, this didn't get a lot of attention when it originally came out. It was it's very, very popular in the arcades. I remember it being popular in the arcades, but when it came to the Dreamcast, it just didn't get any attention paid onto it because it was released... Uh, pretty much at the end of the Dreamcast's life. Um, I think the Dreamcast was just about to go out of production when it came out, and so everybody either traded in their Dreamcasts or they just didn't collect for it anymore, didn't pay any attention to it, which is a shame because this is a lot of fun. You play it with the Dreamcast keyboard and mouse. Uh, you can have up to four people on the go at, at the same time uh, locally, and it's just brilliant fun. And then last up for the Dreamcast is a Sega-produced RPG called Time Stalkers, which is another not very well-known game. And it's a shame, because it's a lot of fun. It's got a good little story to it. But uh, I'm not too far into it right now. I've just tested it out sort of thing, and it's, it's, it's looking good. I'm quite liking it. So, that's good. 
Next up, I think we'll get some uh, PlayStation 1 out of the way. And first up for the PlayStation 1 is another demo disc, which is the Tekken 3 Collector's Edition. Been looking for this demo disc for a long time. Um, it seems to it always seems to go for a little bit of money on eBay. I don't know why. It's not exactly hard to come by, I don't think. But yeah, it's just a really nice demo to have. A very unique little case. And like I said, I'm a demo collector as well, predominantly for the PlayStation 1 that I collect demos for. And it's just nice to have that in your collection. And next up, some PlayStation 1 games themselves. Uh, first up, Vanishing Point, which is not a very good game at all, uh, to be honest. Um, I read a lot about it back in the day in the magazines. I always wanted to play it, because at the time it looked phenomenal. But as reviews came in, it just turned out to be absolute trash, which is a shame. But I thought I'd pick it up, because I found it cheap. The next up is Medieval 2, which is excellent. The, the Medieval games are just fantastic. It's a shame there hasn't been more of them. Um, there was Medieval 1, Medieval 2 on the PlayStation 1, and then they released a compilation of both of them put together for the PSP, and they're absolutely fantastic. I think it's about time we uh, had another one of these, because they're just great PlayStation platforming hack and slash fun. And then uh, last uh, for the games is... Um is a Barbie Explorer. I don't know why, but I seem to acquire a copy of this every other friggin' month. And I don't know why. They either come in bundles or people give them to me. And I just I just can't understand why they give it away. It's one of the greatest games ever made. Absolutely fantastic. And um, PC, the Dreamcastic channel, if you're watching, I think you should genuinely take my uh, offer of this uh, glorious and very very rare game for your in exchange for your Dreamcast dog tags because you just need it in your collection uh, you will regret it for the rest of your life if you do not accept my offer I'm just gonna put that out there and last for the PlayStation 1 is something that I have been looking for forever you either find bits of it or empty boxes or whatever but I've never ever managed to get a complete copy and that is one of the first ever video game collector's editions for a PlayStation console and that is Driver 2 Back on the Streets Limited Edition very very happy to finally find this uh, I'm not going to show you what's inside because I'm going to do a separate unboxing of this for my channel but um, yeah just uh, it contains a few nifty little things and a soundtrack and all that sort of stuff that you kind of expect from uh, limited editions or collector's editions nowadays but this is one of the first ever ones for a uh, PlayStation console uh, this might actually be the first one ever for a PlayStation console actually but yeah I've been looking for it for a very long time and for some reason it is impossible to track down I guess it was an actual limited edition unlike most of the ones you get now which are produced in the thousands And uh, next up, just got a few odd, odd little bits and pieces here. A few uh, cool items that I found over the month. And uh, I'm going to start off with a Lone Master System game, which is Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Um, probably the most well known educational game ever. I think this everybody either had it on the PC or consoles or whatever when they were a kid and it is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, well, okay, maybe it's not fantastic, but it's. It's a lot of nostalgia for me, so a lot of good memories spent playing this. So yeah, it's a very, very important game for me. i um, very happy to pick it up for the Master System. I originally had this for the IBM XT personal computer, which, if any of you know what that is, it's probably... It's fucking massive. It was ridiculous. It was one of the first ever home computers. It was absolutely gigantic. And, and mine, my actual... Uh, my personal computer, back in the day, had a, had a total RAM of 526 KB. Steady. Steady there. But yeah, um, that's what I had this on. I used to play it a lot. Absolutely loved it. Very happy to pick that up. And then I finally found one of these. I wasn't looking for one, but um, it's an R4 um, flash cart for the Nintendo DS. Um, these used to go for quite a bit, but I just stumbled across a guy selling them, and he was like, how much? I was like, how much do you want for it? He's like, I don't know, give me a quid. So yeah, I gave him a pound and I've got flash cart with a micro SD, everything in there. So now I'm just going to load it up with all of my DS games so I can just take that one cart with me and not have to worry about changing the, changing the cards and that when I'm playing. I can take pretty much every game I own with me on the DS, so it's very cool to have. And then next up is... 
some Kid Icarus cards. I don't know if you've been watching my videos for a while, but I've been collecting these ever since they first came about. And uh, now they're getting quite hard to find. So I just made, I found somebody selling them on eBay. Really, really good. Cheap deal. And I managed to snag these for £3 for... What was it? Uh... Okay, where was I? My uh, SD card filled up, so I had to like quickly unload it and uh, start again. So I was babbling about Kid Icarus cards. And so, yeah, I managed to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight packs of Kid Icarus cards for like three quid. And that was including postage. So awesome. Slowly getting a complete set. And next up is one known Super Nintendo game, which was Star Wing. Obviously, everybody has this in their collection already, so I basically just bought it to sell on. Some guy sold it to me for a couple of quid, and I maybe had a you know either trade it with somebody or get a tenner out of it. But yeah, so awesome game, awesome game. That's just the trade. And then uh, next up is something that was a bit what the fuck. I managed to find. A novelization of Doom, Knee Deep in the Dead. Um, it's probably one of those stupidest things to ever have a novel of, but I was curious, so I picked it up. I couldn't say no. Um, I assume there's uh, more of them in the series. I'm going to try and track them down too, because, uh, yeah, it'll be an interesting read. And then another thing that I picked up at the car boot sale, which unfortunately isn't what I thought it is. We're just on our way out of the car boot sale, and I caught a glimpse of this at the corner of my eye, and I went and snagged it in a hurry, and it was uh, this. I thought it was a Nokia N-Gage, but it isn't. It's just one of their uh, phones, which is a very similar design. Um, I didn't properly check it out when I picked it up, so that's a bit of a bummer, but I can always uh, trade it on the eBay for something, because believe it or not, there is a fucking massive subgenre of collectors that want old shitty phones um i i don't understand it but whatever so yeah there's no problem with that i'll be able to trade it for something good and then next up is something i don't normally do on my channel but i, I collect uh vintage board games and so i finally managed to track down a copy of robert heinland's starship troopers um this is the original box game from 1976 and, uh, yeah, very happy to pick that up at last. Absolutely complete. Even has the old catalogue in there and everything. It's a strategic tabletop battle game um, based on the uh, original novel. So, yeah, it's quite cool. Very happy to pick that up. If anybody's interested in what, like, what's inside of this, just uh, shoot me a message and I'll probably shoot a video of an unboxing or something. But very much looking forward to playing this. And then last up, we'll do some Xbox, original Xbox. And uh, first up is... Blinks 2, The Masters of Time and Space, which, if you don't know what Blinks was, there's two, there's two games on the original Xbox. Microsoft tried to make Blinks, the Time Sweeper, their, uh, their mascot, the mascot for the Xbox console, but it never really took off. The games are excellent, and uh, yeah, they're just a lot of fun, and um, it's just one of those things that just didn't quite take off. But very, very good game. And I've got Genma Onomusha, which is an Xbox exclusive version of the PlayStation 1 game, which has a lot of uh, new areas, a lot of levels, um, some bonus stuff and all that in there. So very happy to pick this up as I'm a massive fan of the series. So it's awesome to have that at last. It's a very, very common game, but for some reason I just never picked it up. Next up is Unclave, which is a 3D adventure kind of game with RPG elements in it. Nothing particularly special, but it's a good little time killer. It's a very enjoyable game. And I got Finding Nemo because I'm a massive Disney Pixar fan, and for some reason I just had an urge to play this game when I saw it. It's probably bollocks, but what can you do? And last but not least is some uh, just standard stuff, the original Call of Duty games, Call of Duty 2, the big red one, and Call of Duty 3, which, uh, this is when the Call of Duty series was great, before it turned into the absolute bollocks that it is now, where they release about 10 games a year, and they're all the fucking same, but, um, I kind of enjoyed them when they had a World War 2 setting, kind of like Medal of Honor, I don't know what it was about them, but just I had a lot of fun playing them, so I just picked these up, because uh, I wanted to play them again, it's been a while since I've played them. And then the last thing I have to show you today is something pretty cool that I managed to pick up at the car boot sale. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to have this. It is... Ugh, oh Lord Jesus, it's a chase. And inside this giant, massive, really solid case is a Crystal Xbox. And yeah, that's very, very cool on its own. 
uh, and comes with two crystal pads, which is incredible on its own because normally when you find these Xboxes, the pads aren't with them. The, the pad isn't with them, and yet to find a crystal Xbox in a fucking massive solid case with two crystal pads is is a pretty good feat in its own right. Um, unfortunately, the guy that sold it to me told me that it has disc read errors, but that didn't matter. Basically, all in all, for all of this, uh, the Xbox, the two crystal pads, the leads, and two games, which are Mercenaries, Playground of Destruction, and GoldenEye Rogue Agent, I paid a grand total of five English pounds for. So, you can't really complain. The case alone is worth that, and the pads go for about ten p ten pounds a piece. Um, so, yeah, that's, I'm very, very happy with this find. Uh, the main, I'm not going to bother fixing the uh, disc drive on the Xbox, because I've already got several of them. I'm basically I'm going to hack this, and I'm going to load it up with uh, ROMs and stuff. It's going to hold my entire retro gaming library on there, so I can just take it to other people's houses, whatever, for retro sessions and stuff. So it's going to have my entire video game collection on there, basically. And that's not bad for £5. Very, very happy to pick that up. Um, so yeah, that's the end of this video. I have rambled on for way too long. Um, I'm going to try and make the video shorter in the future, because 20 minutes, it's, it's a lot of me talking a lot of shit, really. So I'm going to try and cut them a bit shorter next time. But thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up and a comment or whatever. And hit subscribe if you don't already because uh, that all really, really helps me out a bunch. And uh, thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Laters.